Welcome back to topic 1.6. Um, this topic covers cell division and just basically the cell cycle itself. So here are all the understandings, applications, guidance, everything IB expects you to know for this um, topic. So now first, right off the bat, we have why mitosis. So if you don't know already, mitosis is the division of a cell along with the replication of chromosomes in order to create two identical daughter cells. So now this can be useful in a variety of um, ways. So right off the bat, for um, just all cells in general, this surface area to volume ratio, um, if the surface area to volume ratio decreases um, too much because of volume increasing cubed while surface area only increases squared, um, this can lead to the cell not being able to do the processes that it requires because it takes so long to exchange gases, diffuse, move things around the cell. So this division essentially takes that volume and cuts it in half while at the same time increasing that surface area. And that increasing that surface area to um, increasing that surface area to volume ratio allows the cell to perform more efficiently. At the same time, on a larger scale, organisms um, need the ability to grow. So take a, a human, for instance. We need that cell division in order to create um, more copies of the cells in order to allow us to grow. At the same time, as we get older, our cells don't live forever. They die. So once those cells die, we need mitosis in order to replace all those cells. And finally, one of the more bigger concepts is um, we need to be able to repair anything such as damage to skin, damage to organs, damage to, every, damage to any um, part of the body. We need a, we need a way in order, to, um, in order to fix that via mitosis. We, allow, we can divide the cells and we can basically, um, we can basically replace or well, not replace, but repair um, what we have damaged such as a cut. And now it's important to note here that this will cause different rates of mitosis in different things. For example, the rate of mitosis in the eye is essentially zero as the eyes, um, not zero, but it, the, rate, the rate at the which the eyes need to um, perform this mitosis and keep the cells alive is nothing near to what the skin needs to do because the skin is constantly being replaced. So um, mitosis is broke down into a couple of different phases, but before mitosis even occurs, we need to have what is called interphase, which is basically just where the cell um, grows um, and does its functions. So the interphase, which is um, everything that's not mitosis or cytokinesis, which is just the process of actual dividing the cell, is going to be in that interphase. So the um, interphase itself is also broke down into um, broken down into four or three or technically four different sections. So first of all, we have this G1 phase. And what happens here is we basically have cell growth. And in this phase, um, just um, the cell will, will prepare for DNA replication and just carry out any cellular functions. So say you look at a pancreatic cell, um, what it'll do is it'll do that those hormone secretion properties. And it'll just um, grow, it'll prepare for cell division, and it'll secrete those hormones in order to um, provide the functions that it needs to. Then we move on to the S phase, which is um, synthesis, um, known as synthesis, DNA synthesis, and this is where the DNA is actually replicate, replicated. And we'll go um, more into DNA replication in um, later topics, but basically you need to know that during this S phase, during interphase is when this DNA is replicated. And then after this, um, we go into the G2 phase, which is basically now, instead of preparing for DNA replication and performing all those necessary functions that it needs to perform for the rest of the body, um, this G2 phase is just basically preparing for that cell division. So um, it'll continue to grow, the centrosome, the centrosomes will form, and DNA is kind of double-checked to prepare for that um, cellular um, division. At the same time, it's also worth noting here that this technically fourth phase is called G0. And an example is blood cells. Blood cells will not divide, but it will rather enter this phase known as G0, where it just performs the functions and is not preparing for cellular division or um, DNA replication. So here we have an example question concerning um, this interphase. So basically, I'll give you a minute to see if you want to pause and answer this question on your own. So during which phase of the cell cycle do chromosomes duplicate? We already talked about how DNA duplicates in the DNA synthesis phase, which is S. So G1, well, that is when um, the cell is growing and preparing for division. S, that S phase, that's probably the answer. G2 is when um, the cell is getting ready for division. And then we have mitosis, which is the process of dividing. So no, it's going to be B, S phase. So then we move on into mitosis. So they are not, um, those labels here are not the best, but I'll um, go over them better. So this um, basically is just your interface over here. 
and your interphase is what we have already discussed. We, you see that the centrosomes are um, forming and then the chromosome, the DNA is duplicating. So then the first phase of mitosis is called prophase. So prophase, the dash, <laughs> phase. So prophase is basically when the DNA begins to supercoil. The, there, um, there's proteins known as histones, and what the DNA will do is they'll wrap around these, um, the DNA will wrap around these eight histones to create a nucleosome, and then that allows the DNA to supercoil into what we know as these chromosomes. At the same time, the nuclear em envelope begins to dissolve, and then the microtubules between these two centrosomes will start to form and, um, in order to later aid the cell in division of, in separation of these chromosomes. And moving on from here, we have, um, we have prometaphase. Now, prometaphase is not as um, commonly seen. It's usually just divided in pro and meta, um, we have metaphase, but we do have technically something called prometaphase. Pro -meta. And here, basically, the, nu the nuclear envelope is pretty much fully dissolved, and then this, this, the um, spindles will start to attach to those chromosomes, but they won't really do any action yet. And now, usually, these two are grouped together. So if you see um, prophase, just think prophase and then also prometaphase. Then find, um, next we have metaphase, M-E-T-A, metaphase. And what's happening here is metaphase, just think M, middle, meta, middle. And what's happening is um, the chromosomes are aligning at the equator of the cell. Um, so the microtubules at this point will have moved to the ends of the cell, the centrosomes, and now the um, microtubules will attach to the centromeres, which is the little connecting region of, um, oh, these two are actually connected, I should draw that better, the centrosome here, this is probably a little better, these two chromosomes, or sister chromatids at this point, are um, connected by this centromere. So what the spindles will do is they'll attach to these centromeres here, and um, they'll kind of pull on them just to make sure that the alignment's correct, but they won't pull them apart yet. So then, during, um, uh, during now next we have anaphase, which is the actual separating of these chromosomes. Now these, this, so when you first um, start for interphase, you have a single chromosome. This is known as a chromosome. It's going to dissolve, or not dissolve, but it'll uncoil for, to, for necessary DNA replication. And this is um, not so much a chromosome, but this is, a, this is what we know as a condensed chromosome. So after DNA replication, we have two of each. So now this whole thing is known as a chromosome, and each one is known as a sister chromatid. So at this point, these two sister chromatids will dissolve after the centromere divides, um, during anaphase and pulled apart to um, different parts of the um, opposite parts of the cell. So now it's worth noting that these are now full chromosomes again. They're no longer chromatids, but now full chromosomes, and we end up right back where we started. The last phase in this um, mitosis is telophase. And at this point, what starts happening is the nuclear membrane forms around the chromosomes as they uncoil, as you'll see here. And the uh, um, the basically what's starting to happen is cells re-entering interphase and the chromosomes are starting to unwind again and um, the cleavage furrow is starting to form. So uh, which of these followings takes place during interphase and mitosis of animal cells? So first um, we have reformation of nuclear membranes. Well we just saw that this is during um, telophase. And then we have pairing of homologous chromosomes. Well, this is not actually done. This is done in meiosis, which we haven't covered yet. But it's worth noting that this pairing of homologous chromosomes is not part of um, mitosis. And then DNA replication is happening during the S phase of interphase. So it's 1 and 3, which gives us D. So finally, um, it's worth noting, or it's, you have to make sure that you understand that the actual cell division is not part of mitosis. It's, a sexu it's, a, it's an extra separate part of um, cell division known as cytokinesis. Now this is going to be the physical division, and it's different between plants and animals. Um, so you have to know these differences. So in animals, what will happen is the cell membrane will pull inward and create this cleavage furrow, as seen um, back here. This is going to be your cleavage furrow. And what will happen is the contractile proteins known as myosin and actin will 
um, cause the cell membrane to kind of pull in towards each other and once it'll keep going on into the middle and what will happen is is once it reaches the middle it'll just divide now if you go remember back from um, when we studied um, plasma membranes these pl plasma membranes are um, they can easily divide and reconnect allowing for this um, process to happen almost seamlessly now in plant cells we don't really have so much this um, cleavage furrow developing because the cell is not going to um, split into half um, like you would see in the animal cell because we have the cell wall to maintain. So what's going to happen here is um, Golgi vesicles are going to move to the center of the cell and what happens is they form this tubular structure basically kind of two layers and this is going to be um, this is going to connect the existing cell walls. So the vesicles will come on into the middle and then they'll start depositing um, cellulose in the middle in order to create this cell plate which will serve as the cell wall and it's just important to note that we have the um, we have a cell plate in animal cells whereas in um, animal cells we just have really this um, cleavage furrow so now the whole um, cell cycle is kind of controlled by this um, what are known as cyclins so these are um, cyclins are a group of proteins which will attach to cyclin dependent kinases and then basically what will happen is they'll attach phosphate groups to activate these proteins so we'll have the cyclin dependent kinase and what will happen is a cyclin will come it'll attach that phosphate group it'll change the structure a little bit and then now it's ready and it'll start activating certain portions of um, certain portions of the cell cycle so first we have um, we have cyclin D well we have, cy we have four cyclins we have cyclin D cyclin E, cyclin A, and cyclin B. So this D cyclin is basically what is known as G1 cyclin. It's going to move us from G0 to G1 and then bring us into S phase, where you can see is kind of um, where it peaks. Um, so then we have the E cyclin, which is this G1 S slash S cyclin. And what this is going to do is it's going to prepare the cell for DNA replication. If you'll notice, it kind of peaks right before S phase. So that's kind of signaling like it's getting ready for um, DNA division. Then we have A, which is actually right D, E, A. We have S cyclin, which is known as A cyclin. And what this does is it activates DNA replication. Um, and then finally we have um, B cyclin, which is known as M cyclin, and it active it the mitotic basically what it does is it causes the mitotic spindle and other my, mitosis stuff to form. Just seen as it kind of peaks right before um, M mitosis. So the diagram shows four cyclins during the cell cycle. Which curve represents the cycling that promotes the assembly of mitotic spindle? So now as we saw here, um, this, cy this cycling here, the over arc is going to control basically the movement from G0 to G1 to S phase as it kind of peaks in S phase. This, um, this one right here, which is known as um, E, is going to prepare the cell for DNA replication. This is going, the C is going to, which is rising during S phase, is, ap is going to activate DNA replication. And then this um, last one here is my um, different um, functions for mitosis, including this mitotic spindle. So we have D. So then now we have cells under the microscope. IB requires that you understand um, how to analyze different um, stages of meiosis, mitosis under the microscope. So if you notice, say here, we have the pulling apart of chromosomes, which is anaphase. Here, we have them lining up at the equator, which is metaphase. Now here, um, this would kind of be telophase because you can see that these chromosomes are starting to kind of uncondense and they're already at the opposites and you can even kind of see maybe a cleavage furrow there. Um, and then probably if you were looking for prophase, um, it would kind of be something like this. You can see that the chromosomes are condensing, but they're not really moving anywhere yet. So we have mutagens, tumors, and cancer. So basically what we have to look at here is the cell cycle does not always go as planned. We have some abnormalities and some things that don't exactly um, go correct all the time. 
So um, ad abnormal cell growth is basically when, say, a cell does not no longer um, can restrict its division and divides uncontrollably. And now, if they don't pose a threat, this um, this uncontrollable cell growth forms a tumor, but it's known as benign. It doesn't cause any harm. It's easily removable. No worries. But if it starts to um, go to other parts of the body and it um, kind of takes the resources away from other cells, this is going to be known as a, mon a malignant tumor because it's going to start being harmful to the body. So, um, first of all, we have mutagens. What happens is um, these mu these um, classifications, kind of pictures over here, are known as mutagens because what they do is they cause um, mutations within the cell, cell DNA which causes um, these uncontrollable cell divisions. So we have um, basically high energy waves which is like UV and x-ray, both of these can cause DNA mutations. Um, we have carcinogens such as um, tobacco, or not tobacco necessarily, but all the chemicals in cigarettes and there's actually some chemicals in um, hot dogs that are not so good for you that can cause um, have cancer causing properties and then finally um, surprisingly or many people don't know but viruses can actually alter the DNA and cause um, these mutations which can lead to cancer um, because there are certain genes in the cell that lead to cancer and they're called oncogenes on con I cannot pronounce this word oncogenes oncogenes. Kind of going into the picture there, but you get the idea. Oncogenes. And what these genes, these genes are responsible for the role they play in um, the regulation of cell division. So if these are mutated, then what happens is we, instead of we having this normal cell division, we have highly uncontrolled cell division. And now it's worth noting that the mutations are very rare. And even in the chance of mutation, we have the cells have many ways in order to repair these mutations or just kill the cell before it gets out of control. But thinking of the trillions of cells in the body, the probability um, just rises and rises because of how many cells there are. And the body can't prevent and repair every single um, damage or mutation. So then once this tumor starts to form, this is called the primary tumor. And if it spreads, like, say, through the blood system, the circulatory system, and travels to other places, this is going to be known as a secondary tumor because it's going to come to the bloodstream and, say, implant if it started in the liver and then, say, it implants in the stomach wall. That would be a secondary tumor. So now just some free response questions. What are... Um, so here, this is cells go through a repeating cycle of events in growth regions such um, as plant root tips and animal embryos. Outline the cell cycle. So you know immediately you're going to talk about interphase. Interphase, you're going to talk about G1, S, G2. Talk about all the different um, properties and what happens in each of those phases. Now, you probably won't want to mention G1 here because this is not... Um, repeating cycle and this is not a regions of growth because these aren't going to be dividing so don't bring in G1 there or G0 there. Then you'll talk about prophase, you can talk even talk about prometaphase if you want, um, metaphase, anaphase, telophase, um, and then cytokinesis just to bring it all together and then talk about how that whole cycle repeats and is it controlled by these um, four cyclins over here. And you'll definitely get um, all those four points. And then we have list two examples of how human life depends on mitosis. That goes back to the beginning where we were talking about why we need mitosis in the first place. So we have growth. Um, so we need to allow an organism to grow. So say an embryo to grow into um, a baby. I'll try to draw a little person here. Embryonic development. Um, from there we need to grow into an adult. So that's kind of like two right there. Um, we need to be able to heal wounds, so if we have a cut, we need to be able to patch that cut over. We need to be able to replace, like if the cell dies, we need, we need, we need to be able to replace that cell. So all of those are very um, good examples, and you only need two examples and to get that one point. But um, some things to stay away from, we don't want to talk about um, my meiosis, so basically sexual reproduction, that's kind of off limits when talking about mitosis. 